Five years have passed since the dark figure moved among the citizens of Blackstone, distributing the gifts that brought madness and death. Each month had brought a new gift and a new tragedy. A doll, a woman's locket, then a cigarette lighter, a handkerchief and an old-fashioned stereoscope. The public never learned the identity of the dark figure, but somehow everyone knew the old asylum was at the center of the tragedies. People got on with their lives. Oliver Metcalf, son of the last asylum keeper, married Rebecca Morrison. A year later, they had a son, who has since remained blissfully ignorant of the evil that has plagued his family. Now, the State Historical Society has renovated the asylum and plans to open it as a museum of psychiatric history. Malcolm Metcalf, the last superintendent of the asylum, was my father. The last time the old building was disturbed, my memories of him came alive and I became the dark figure. This time, I pray to God he will leave me and my family in peace. Welcome back, Oliver. It's been almost five years. Hello, father. What do you want? Look around, Oliver. Do you know where you are? It's the old asylum, but it doesn't look like this anymore. It's all been changed. You disobeyed me, Oliver. You never finished the task I set out for you. I did more than I should have. Nonsense. Your task was simple. You were to seek revenge on the families. You've killed enough people, Father. Can't you leave me alone? No. First, they took the asylum from me. Now they plan to turn it into a museum. They must be punished, Oliver, starting with that woman you married. You should know better than that. I won't do it. The son disobeys the father, eh? Perhaps I'll have better luck with your son. Joshua. Who are you? Grandfather Malcolm. I thought you were dead. Oh, oh, oh. oh, no. Come along with me, Joshua. I know some games we can play. Okay. You see, Oliver, I mean to have my revenge. Perhaps you will see things my way before the night is through. I'm sure young Joshua will. Dad? I'm scared, Daddy. Don't worry, Josh. I'm coming. I was with Grandpa, but then something happened. Now I'm all alone. It'll be okay, Josh. I'm coming to get you. So today I have a very peculiar game with me. It's called John Sahl's Blackstone Chronicles. It was made in 1998 by Red Orb, uh, Red Orb Entertainment. It is... A, a bit of a gem and uh, not very well known. There are a lot of adventure titles out there like Land of Mist, Darkfall and Titanic Adventure Out of Time, just to name a few that this game is very similar to. We looked at Strawberry Magic and some other Let's Plays and it's amazing just the difference. It's, they're both set around the same time period but it's amazing what graphics and how beautiful this game presents itself over something like that. Um, I think even by today's standards this would come up pretty well still today if they were to remake it. Unfortunately, like I said, it's not really well known. Uh, before we actually start though, I have uh, a little backstory on this that I feel was necessary to tell because there is a lot involved with this particular game. It takes place after the events of the book series. So this game is actually based on a six part series by John Sahl. Um, it is a psychological uh, supernatural book or series. It really just depends on which one you find. Um, it was originally released in six parts. They're short stories. Uh, some books are actually created and have all six stories in them. So what actually happened was prior to the events of this game, the Oliver was an editor for Blackstone 
town he did the newspaper articles that we saw at the beginning so what actually happened was these particular items that were mentioned at the beginning of the game were distributed around the citizens of Blackstone Blackstone is located in England the asylum sits up on an old hill and the town had decided that the asylum was to be demolished it was not repairable it was condemned so naturally this made Malcolm Metcalf really angry he is a very vengeful spirit he possessed Oliver to distribute these particular items around and they take effect on the citizens in different and various ways usually resulting in suicides and deaths or accidental deaths um, so what actually happened is after the events of this Oliver has broken free but Malcolm is not happy he still wants his revenge and um, the citizens decided that they would overhaul the asylum and turn it into a museum rather than destroying it ultimately Malcolm Metcalf is still not happy with this decision he wants what he started to be finished Oliver refuses to do this so he kidnaps his son Joshua I actually have all six books here uh, I'll just read a little bit off the back of the first one which is called An Eye for an Eye, The Doll and it says from the top of Blackstone's highest hill the old Blackstone Asylum casts its shadow over the village built in the 1890s the asylum has stood vacant for decades but now the wreckers ball is about to strike smashing into stone and unleashing a terrible evil an unholy fear long locked within these walls soon strange gifts will appear to, uh, will begin to appear on the doorsteps of Blackstone's finest citizens each bears a mysterious history each brings a horrifying power to harm each reveals another thread in the suspensefully woven web of Blackstone Chronicles and there's a little bit of information about Oliver Metcalf uh, being the editor um, it just explains the book in, in a little bit more detail so the first book that's the first book called An Eye for an Eye the doll they are extremely well written and I have to admit this game also uh, is very true to the source material it follows along with the voice acting fantastically it is quite phenomenal and I think out of all the adventure games I've played I think this would have to be on my top 10 list it is an absolutely amazing game however it does not run on newer PCs you may be lucky to get it to run on Windows XP unfortunately you'll need a virtual machine to run it um, like virtual PC uh, 2007. So we have the second book here. It's called Twist of Fate, The Locket. It still has the same uh, intro that I just read, but it has the story of Jules Hartwick um, instead. We have the third book, which is Ashes to Ashes, The Dragon's Flame, which is about the cigarette lighter, which is in the shape of a dragon. Book four is In the Shadow of Evil, The Handkerchief. Book 5 is Day of Reckoning, The Stereoscope. And a stereoscope, um, just before I proceed on to the last book, is an item which was used to take two identical images um, on different angles and you would look through it. Um, it's very scientific. I'll explain it later because we will actually come across the stereoscope. Um, and book number 6 is just called Asylum. So all of these are insanely dark. Another thing about this game, not to prattle on too long, I know it is my, my intro is going on for a long time, but I feel it's very nece necessary to explain all this in detail because you really do have to understand it to understand this particular game. There is a lot of history also behind this asylum itself. Um, it also takes a really good look into what asylums were like in the 1890s and um, 1800s in general. Um, as someone who's from Australia, we have haunted asylums. I've actually been in one uh, a while ago. It was called Ararat or Aradale Asylum, if you would like to look it up. It's known as one of the haunted places in Australia, or one of the top haunted places in Australia. Uh, so this game looks has a bit of insight to patients and how they'd be admitted. So you'd find that it would probably take one or two family members to commit a patient. They didn't necessarily have to be insane. 
the people would only have to say that they had a certain issue or problem and you'd be committed and you'd find it would take six or seven people to get you out of the asylum so um, in the day, I, I believe a lot of people would have used this as an exploit, especially to get gain custody of money and what have you. So, and But it wasn't that that made people crazy. I mean, I'm sure there would have been a few people that had some mental illnesses like schizophrenia and would have been locked up in places like this. Uh, however, I also believe that some of the procedures that they did in these asylums was actually what made patients crazy. They would do lobotomies and quite often people would be awake while these were being performed. There would also be experiments such as electric shock therapy, bleeding and sometimes people would bleed out and die and as you can imagine experiencing lobotomies while being awake and electric shock therapy would make anyone crazy after a long period of time. That's a little bit of backstory anyway. I felt I had to sort of do it uh, for this game because there is a lot involved with it. It also is very dark and you need to read everything to understand it. I will explain along the way because I just unfortunately don't have time to click on every little thing and read it out to you guys. So I may do a walkthrough for this later on. Alright, so let's start. So we'll start on the lower floor here. We'll talk to Malcolm and we'll collect the items on the lower floor and then we'll head to the second floor. It's also a very cinematic game. Everything you do is cinematic. Also, um, if you do get this game, I recommend installing the additional graphics. It has an option to do that. It just makes this game look so much more stunning. You wouldn't even think it was made in 1998. Welcome back, Oliver. Where have you taken him, Father? He's in the secret room. You know where that is, don't you? I haven't been in here for five years. You remember, Oliver. You just don't want to admit it. I don't remember. Part of you remembers. You must let that part come back. You will gain control of me again. I never controlled you. You became the dark figure because you wanted to. You gave out the gifts because it was the right thing to do. I will never go back. If you wish to rescue young Joshua, you must. It's just a hallucination. An interesting hypothesis. Incorrect, but interesting. I assure you, I am quite real. And this is not a nightmare from which you will somehow awaken. Why can't you leave us alone? I cannot do that, Oliver. A parent's responsibility to his child never ends, even in death. What are you talking about? You have not been a good boy, Oliver. Not only have you chosen to abandon my life's work, you have also refused to seek revenge upon those who cut it short. What does he have to do with it? Someone must shoulder the family burden. If you refuse the task, then I must train young Joshua, just as I once trained you. You tortured me. Rubbish. I used pain as an appropriate motivational device, just as every parent does. Except I was far more rational than most. I never hurt you in anger, Oliver. Not every father can say that. Bring him back. No. You must come and get him. I believe spending time in this building will remind you of how important our work is. And that it will help persuade you it must be finished. I want you to rediscover the part of you that is buried, Oliver. However, you have only until dawn. If you have not entered the secret room by daybreak, I will give up on you for good and begin to teach Joshua what it means to be born a Metcalf. Okay, so um, 
as we've already established, from the voice acting is really great. I, I love Malcolm's voice actor. It's spot on. It has that really tense touch. Um, this game also talks a lot about spirits and how spirits function. Moose were so plentiful, I hardly see why shooting one was regarded as an accomplishment. I've never understood how people can be so cruel to animals. <laughs> you wait till later on. I don't want, without spoiling it, being cruel to animals isn't the only thing that's actually concerning in this game. Um, but as I was saying earlier, this game focuses on spirits and how spirits work. Um, so anyone who knows about ghosts know that they usually have an attachment to a certain item in order to stay present in an area. Uh, prior to this game, Malcolm possessed Oliver to distribute those gifts that we spoke about. He's a very strong evil spirit. His entity stays within this asylum, which is why they couldn't destroy it uh, or demolish the condemned asylum at the time. So they decided to turn it into this museum, obviously, to appeal to his spirit, but apparently that's not work because he sees it as they still destroyed it because it's not original. It's not how Malcolm had the asylum. Paracelsus was the greatest medieval healer of his day. That is Hippocrates, the father of all medicine. I have a great admiration for Freud. He had profound insight into human behavior. So we'll just go over here. We're not allowed to leave the building. But I will click on the door anyway. Leave now, Oliver, and your son will be mine forever. Is that what you want? I didn't think so. He's quite evil. They did a nice job with that. At least he was happy with something the woodwork. This is the way the entry hall looked before the Blackstone Historical Society purchased the asylum and began our restoration program. The restoration of the entry hall is now complete, although other areas of the building still remain to be restored. I think we can actually click on these images and look at them it too. It broke my heart how they let this place go to ruin. It'll never be the way it was, Oliver. They destroyed it. So we can hear how much anger there is in that voice too. Um, also clicking on the Blackstone Asylum plaques here, we can read into the asylum and you'll find a lot of backstory. It even talks about illnesses at the time, or the, that time period, mental illnesses. Um, there's a lot of big words used in this too. The vocabulary is um, crazy, <laughs> just to say the, the least. But um, rather than me reading this all, like I said, I don't have time to sort of show everything in the Let's Play, but I'll certainly cover and bring up these pages as I go, and we'll be doing a walkthrough on it. So, we've got the Asylum Years here. I'm not sure if I remember this game inside out. I've played it a few times in the past, but it's quite odd. It seems like a really weird game to make as a series, like um, a video game, I think. I don't. I know the books were best selling books at the time, but I don't think they were insanely popular enough to make a game, honestly. It just seemed like a very odd choice to me at least, but there are heaps of other games that were based on stories and books like Nancy Drew, just to say as an example. Nancy Drews were real na well renowned uh, novels at the time. So it makes sense that there'd be video games of those, but even Sabrina, like I know there's some Sabrina games out there too. The Sabrina the Witch, that was a popular TV series, so I know it's not a big surprise that there would be a game based on it. I'm getting a bit sidetracked. You must forgive me, I'm pretty tired and I actually have a migraine today, so I'm stopping and having to think about all the words that I'm using. They're too soft. Promotes poor posture. We don't have time to sit down, but... Do you really think you should be resting, Oliver? 
I like how he always provokes you. He tries to. He's always a calm spirit. His intentions are still Your pretty strong. Your grandfather was quite the hunter. I never cared for blood sports myself. All right. Um, I think that's about it on the first floor here. So we'll just go forward a little bit. Now we can't go through the doors on the left hand side, but on the right hand side we can go into the day room. This room always makes me feel a bit sad, I think, because of the type of area it is. It's a very sad area. We encourage the violent inmates to take up painting. No art ever came of it, but it seemed to help calm them down. I hate how when he talks, it's almost as if he's talking down on the patients. It's like they don't matter anymore. Or anything they do matters. He just th sees everything like they're doing as a form of therapy to fix the person and he doesn't see it as it will accomplish anything that will be any good to society because they're crazy. Which is pretty sad when we think about it. But this is how people were treated in the, the 1800s. If you were considered crazy, no one wanted to listen to you. If, say for example, I'll use mediums as an example for this one actually. Mediums can see and talk to spirits here. They do it in a variety of ways, whether it be with numbers or they get images or they get um, visions. If people back in the 1800s they saw these dead people, naturally everyone's going to think they're crazy and they'd be locked up and they wouldn't be considered being a human. That's just as an example. Schizophrenia would definitely be the top one for mental asylums. You probably find the awl that... was used by inmates working on leather crafts. You probably find that murderers and of of the sort would be in here too. Um, inmates also sort of had like day jobs as well inside asylums. If they were considered to not be dangerous inmates, they'd be able to do woodworks and art, painting, and that sort of thing. This is a swivel knife used to slice leather. It is a myth that sharp objects had to be withheld from all patients. Some mental illnesses pose no threat to the patient or his fellow inmates. Okay, so that just pretty much summed up what I was <laughs> trying to say. So we'll take this item. I always tried to keep the patients busy. Yes. Why let me take these? Why won't let me take this? Saying, look at the case, but the case is open. There we go. Took a moment to register that it's open. Well, let me take this. We'll just close the case. We'll close the case and we'll do it again. Usually, I can open and just take an item. Okay. There we go. So, so that's really peculiar. I've never actually had it do that at all. In all the times I've had it and played it, even on a virtual machine, I've never had that happen. A lot of people go to crazy extents to be able to play older games that I think a lot of them forget that you can actually get a virtual PC and run these games quite smoothly. And I mean, it can be done. You can run them on Windows 10 if you're a tech whiz or a tech guru. Unfortunately, I don't have uh, the capability. Even though I've used a lot of older computers and been around computers and stuff, I don't know all the ins and outs and coding and how to do that. And you find that um, they have a massive problem with converting 32-bit like to 64-bit. That's where the major problem comes from. Also reading files. Some games, and Strawberry Magic was one of these games, um, Sierra games in particular, they don't read the CD files. The filing, the way the files were back then, or back in the day, 90s, um, they were processed differently. 
and computers now don't read those files, they're unknowns. You may think these crap's trite, but they were very important to the patients. I like how he makes everything seem like it was all done for the patients. Everything was for the patients and their health and to make them feel better and... It's just... it's kind of... it's really sad. Doesn't feel cold at all. Yeah, it's dripping. Well, that's why. That's why it's not working. That can't be working. It's not working. I think I have all the voice actors. Oliver's voice actor is probably the worst. He doesn't have a lot of emphasis on the way he talks. I mean, even the kid does a little bit better than him, and Malcolm is definitely the most scariest figure in this whole entire game. It's worthless, Oliver. It's deader than I am. That's debatable. Is it empty? It hasn't been recharged in years. The fire department will crucify them at final inspection. This is true. Um, we can also take a look at items. I don't think this has a blade in it. Not much good without a blade. Yeah, it's really not. It's old, but it looks serviceable. A thin punch like that was perfect for making holes in leather. And the fuse... well, we don't have much to say about that. Lucky the whole place didn't burn down. Insanely lucky. I don't think a fuse blowing could set the place on fire, honestly. And I mean, it is just a freezer. We'll need this later. There. Much sharper now. I don't think... Yeah, it's locked. Okay. I don't think we can... It doesn't fit in there. Close, yeah. though. <laughs> Close, though. Can we use this? Yes, we can. Awesome. Ooh. I will take that. So we got that item out of there. That'll be useful. We'll take the skewers, too. We might need them. And um, you can click on everything. You can look at the sink and... This was just for spot cleaning. The automatic dishwashers are around behind the freezer. Well, that's nice. Nice to know. Dishwashers. Jeez, the dishwashers in the The inmates did a surprising amount of the cooking. Therapeutic and cost-effective at the same time. Mainly cost-effective. Because, <laughs> you know, why spend money on actual workers? Ooh, tongs. I'll take those. Don't think we need... I could pretty much take everything. Oh, leave it be, Oliver. Stop fidgeting about. Oh, he's so angry. How dare you take that ladle? It's my Did ladle. you know lobsters used to be so plentiful and cheap that railroad workers ate them three meals a day? They got so sick of them, they went on strike for the right not to be fed lobsters. Which is strange, because now lobsters are probably the most expensive thing out, especially at Christmas time. So we better not take the ladle. I would like to have the frying pan. I feel like that's every woman's true weapon, the frying pan. Because I don't follow stereotypes at all. Okay, I think we have everything on the first floor now. For now, anyway. We'll have to backtrack. Like many adventure games at the time, there's a lot of backtracking. So we'll just head on over here. Now even though I said earlier that this room seems like a sad room, there are many other sadder rooms than this one. We're seeing the sunny side, so to speak. The, more like this is like grass is greener on the other side and we're on the, the greener side. We haven't got to the side where it's all dry and prickly yet. Now, I mean, I'm not really spoiling the story. I'm not going to spoil any of the story. But I think walking in this asylum, being aware that Malcolm is definitely the evil spirit here, I think anyone can see there is more beyond what you see here. <laughs> beyond what you seek. Okay, what have we got here? I'm going to touch the screen. It's also crucial to click on all of these and read these too. Oh, it talks about Malcolm. Metcalf. Well, that's interesting. Oh, it just tells like his life, um, his first paper, 
is a compliment. Um, a com accomplishments, I mean. I can't English either, apparently, today. Um, he has, um, his, he married Olivia, who, um, daughter of the Asylum's founder. So he's sort of taken over from where Olivia, his father, had left off. Um, I don't think we've got the superintendent's role. So, an administrative, so he did um, administrative duties in the office probably. He locked up and uh, opened doors depending on what was needed. Okay, go back and we've got some research. So back, this is probably around the time period when asylums were doing research and basically uh, the inmates were guinea pigs for these experiments and finding out if it would cure a person or make them better, quotation marks. In any psychiatric hospital, controlling access is of paramount importance. Each worker had only those keys that allowed him to do his job. Only the superintendent had the master set of keys to every lock in the building. Okay. The elevator in the entry hall was used only by the superintendent and his special visitors. To ensure there was no unauthorized use, he had the operator's handle locked up in his office each night. Seems just my only gripe with uh, this game. Being a museum, why would you have this here? Wouldn't you make like a duplicate, especially if it was a museum and you need to go upstairs? I mean, you'd have to have this handle. So you wouldn't be able to display it and use it at the same time and assumingly you'd have more than one person in the building at a time. Being a museum. Just my thought. So we'll go over here next. This is Olivia, this is Oliver's mum. She's not here, Oliver. She rarely came into the asylum and never formed a strong enough connection with anything to keep her spirit here. Your mother died too soon, Oliver, but I no longer blame you and Mallory for her death. It's actually pretty sad, blaming a child for her mother's death. The vases belong to your mother. Mm. Nice tea set we have here. Take it. I think we can actually. Some items you can look at depending. M. M. Malcolm Metcalf? So we've got uh, a few interesting items. We'll open the drawer. I think there's a nutcracker in here. Which is probably used for more than just cracking nuts. That was always one of your favorites. I used to crack nuts with it when you came to play. And fingers, and toes, and who knows what else you probably put inside it too. That was taken on your third birthday. It's you and your sister Mallory. The day you were born was the most important day of my life. Lies. So many lies. <laughs> Password, Scooter. Oh, the 90s. Hmm. I sure hope they remove this before they open next this week. It's probably when the first Windows 98 computer came out. Has the floppy drive and the CD drive. Oh, okay, so the computer, we can use this to track inmates or patients that were in the asylum. We can get information on them. So we'll just put the password Scooter in. And now we have to type the first and last name of a patient and it'll give us the records. It'll give us the treatment and all sorts of interesting stuff. It's also interesting to see that um, 
They're restoring this asylum, but it's not restored to how it was original originally, so it's completely different. Which I think is another reason why Metcalf is so hostile. Um, I'm gonna put this in here. So now we can go to the basement and the second floor. But we'll do that in the next video. I feel like I prattled on a little bit too much for this video. I know it's gone a little bit longer than it should do. But like I said, I felt that that was really necessary to discuss the background of this game. Because it is a hidden gem within the adventure titles. And it's a different type of... Um, I think it was really bold to sort of make a game about spirits and ghosts. And I thought, like I said earlier, I think it was a bit odd to base it on books. <laughs> these types of books at least um, when there's heaps of other stories that are probably more popular at the time anyway I will see you guys in the next video thank you for watching